For those of you who don't know me, I hope I've met most of you in the last uh, 24 hours, but my name is Allison Russell, and I'm the program manager for cholera, and I also support uh, typhoid at Gavi. So happy to meet all of you who I'm meeting for the first time. Getting there. Now we have Antara on the screen. She's, she's joining me. Um, we work on the same vaccine programs team. Antara is supporting a lot of our new diagnostics work, which I'm also going to give you a glimpse of. So. Um, I guess I can start by just commending this group. It's really nice to meet all of us in person beyond uh, just the OCV working group as well. And, um, you know, I, I started in OCV world thanks to Dr. Sack in about 2013 as a graduate student. So in the past 10 years, I think we've come a really long way and it's, it's really impressive to be back in this room with you, um, sharing this with you. Okay, here we go. Um, so... Today, I'm happy to share with you a bit about the expansion of our support for the OCV preventive program and uh, talk a little bit about what's changing, what's not. I know a lot of you have questions and I'm really happy a lot of you have already approached me with the questions you have. So I'll try to keep this brief and encourage you to keep doing that and keep asking me questions <laughs> afterwards. We'll quickly talk about um, the diagnostic procurement support as well that is new uh, from this year. skip through this. So just where have we come from very briefly? Um, Gavi has originally supported the stockpile in 2014, as you know, and the original goal being breaking the cycle of low demand, low supply. Um, and we, we've clearly seen an increase in demand. We're still working on increasing in the supply to meet that on a year by year basis. Uh, but the other goal being reducing outbreaks. And since that time, there's been uh, you know, a shift towards thinking how can we be using the vaccine more preventively. Um, and in response to that demand for preventive use in 2018, the Gavi board approved um, expanding our support for, for OCV for that use. Um, I'll let you go through <laughs> more detail about how those investment decisions are, are made. Uh, but just to say that the, the decision in 2018 was based on um, a few of these different criteria among some other vaccines that were being um, assessed at the same time and um, was scored with a medium health impact, but an important contribution to equity, social protection, global health security, um, and as well recognizing the high risk of large scale um, uh, socio-political and economic co consequences from outbreaks. So the investment recommendation at the time was for uh, planned preventive vaccination as part of a broader control strategy, um, not a standalone intervention as we've been talking about this week. Uh, so supplemented by scale up of WASH activities um, and is well focused on the, the learning agenda and seeing how we can use the vaccine um, in, in new and, and better ways. So shortly after this decision, COVID-19 happened. And so since then, uh, there was this uh, pause on, on um, kind of operationalizing uh, our investment for these new vaccines. So last year, uh, we started the process to, to kick off the design of the OCV program. And thanks to a lot of your input in the last six months, um, we now have the, the funding guidelines and the application materials that should be on the website by the end of the month. We're just putting the fin finishing touches on those. Um, and we're now entering this transition period and we have time for this, don't be worried. We anticipate this will take um, up, to, up to a year. And we're really happy to work one on one with countries together with GTFCC to figure out kind of what this process looks like for, for each country. So from January 2023, countries will be able to apply directly to Gavi for multi-year approval for use of the vaccine. Um, so through this consultation, a few themes emerged as the direction that we collectively want to see the preventive program go in. We've taken these into consideration in, in how the design um, of the program was set up and really hope to work with you towards these goals. Um, so briefly, these are strengthening the campaign planning and implement implementation, um, especially focused on, on long-term multi-year plans and approvals. Okay, so the second goal is to improve the, the planning and the predictability of the preventive campaigns. As we know, that's been a challenge, um, and we hope this will help both countries and manufacturers in long-term forecasting and um, making sure that we're able to implement those preventive plans. 
finally, we, we see the opportunities to start to implement preventive OCV activities in a more integrated way with WASH, as we've been talking about, with EPI programs. Some countries are really starting to do this already. Um, and hopefully improving this coordination um, and impact of the OCV campaigns. Um, okay, so now what is changing, what is not changing? This is <laughs> important, I think. So a lot of the process is, is not changing, and that's that um, you know, all of the, the technical support and the guidance will continue to be provided by GTFCC and partners, um, by CSP and countries, supporting the countries. So that, that's not changing. What's changing is mostly the application review process, which will now be uh, from 2023 by the Independent uh, Review Committee. Um, so it's facilitated by Gavi, but it's actually an independent committee who's, who's reviewing those applications. Uh, and then some of the grant management pieces will be shifting to Gavi, but the actual implementation and the support will still be from GTFCC and, and partners. Also to note, we still have the same vaccine and the same stockpile. There have been some questions about that. Um, so for the moment, that's not changing. And um, so the campaigns, it will still be campaign-based, not routine. And uh, when the demand is greater, than the supply that we have, we'll still use a coordination body and allocation principles to determine where that supply is going. And that will be separate from the approval process. So it's important your requests are for what is needed. I think that's the main message there. Um, okay. So what the review committee will be looking for in these applications, these long-term plans, I see a lot of cameras saying, I think you'll get these as notes too, <laughs> don't worry. Um, so it's the same that we've, we've been talking about. So that's a, a strong rationale that's driven by the epidemiology in the country, um, increased use of diagnostics perhaps to, to be driving those decisions about where to target use of the vaccine. It's advanced planning. Um, it's coordination with the, the other entities involved, uh, also trying to reduce the, the burden on um, the healthcare system and doing lots of campaigns. And then how can we use these campaigns for, for other health activities? I think yesterday we'd even talked about nutrition activities and things like that. Um, and the, the you know, important piece is that OCV will remain part of a broader caller control strategy. So the review committee will be looking to see uh, you know, that the vaccine is being used as part of a, a strategy and not over relying on just vaccine for cholera control. Um, so for those who Gavi is a little newer, I want to put our, um, our, the support for the vaccine in, in context of what else is a bit new. So this diagram is showing you all of the funding available to countries from Gavi. Um, so in green, you see the preventive program, the vaccines and operational cost, which is what is shifting. Uh, the outbreak response support through ICG remains how it is. I think I have some colors here. Um, and then the non-vaccine support is what I wanted to highlight as the other um, types of grants that Gavi provides that will now be able to be used for cholera-related activities now that cholera is part of the Gavi portfolio from, from next year. Um, so this can health system strengthening can include surveillance and data. Um, we have cold chain, we have TA, things like that. So that will become available. And I think some of you are already in the process of figuring out how those funds can be used. Okay. Quickly to talk about uh, the diagnostics aspect. Um, so Gavi's first involvement with diagnostics was with yellow fever diagnostics. And um, since the Alliance expanded support for yellow fever diagnostics, many countries have access procurement funding and there's more widespread and rapid detection of cases. And this was sort of the, our, our first, um, first ex um, exploration into diagnostics. And in December of last year, Gavi's board approved um, funding for an expanded portfolio of, uh, of antigens. So now we're, we're looking to see what support we can provide in, in these other areas, and cholera is luckily included in this list. <laughs> Um, and the goal will be to see how our funding can be used um, to, to allow diagnostics to make vaccine programs uh, more effective, more efficient, more equitable, how we can really understand how best to use vaccines and have better information how to use vaccines. 
Um, this is saying what I just said. We'll let you have these slides later. <laughs> So here's the status today. We have uh, multiple options, as we know, on the table, but there's been um, a clear need expressed for expanded use of RDTs as, as the most practical and cost-effective option. So what comes next? Um, for RDTs, or for any diagnostic really, to be eligible for Gavi funding, it needs to be pre-qualified first by WHO or have some interim recommendation while that's in process. So that's the first step. Once those, um, that recommendation or pre-qualification is available, um, we need to develop funding guidelines and that will be informed by some pilot projects um, hopefully happening in the next year or so uh, to determine how, if we have expanded RDTs, how these can be used best in surveillance strategies. So this will be building on the work of the surveillance and the other groups that were presenting yesterday. Um, so once the guidance, funding guidance is ready, countries will be able to apply for procurement support for these diagnostics.